So we're going to do a PowerPoint where I'm going to kind of tell you what an architect and or an interior architect or an interior designer does because they all relate to one another. And I know when I was your age, I had no clue. I grew up in Missouri. I'm first in college. My sisters didn't go to college. I have one who didn't finish high school. So um, I'm like an alien, I guess, in a sense. But I want to, and I had, I had no idea. And I'll, and I'll show you a little bit about that. But anyway, I've got this name with all these acronyms. It's really crazy. But yes, I do have a PhD in architectural history from MIT. I am a fellow of the AIA. That means I'm an architect. There are 100,000 architects in the United States. There are 20,000 in New York. 3% of the 100,000 get elevated to become a fellow. And I'm very lucky that I'm a fellow. Same thing with interior design. This is International Interior Design Association. I've been elevated as an interior designer, as a fellow. And I can do that because I took this test that interior designers should take called the NCIDQ test. And I took the architecture test. The only difference was that there was a lot of math in the architecture test and no math in the interior design test. But it was still very hard. And, um, and then ASID, I can call myself that because I passed that test. And then CID, in your state, I am certified as an interior designer in Florida. And every state is different. And so even though I have all those acronyms, no one's allowed to call me any of those names. All right, we are on a first name basis here, even the president, you call him David rather than President Rhodes. And so everyone here calls me Carol, correct? Yes. And, and we love it that way because it really is, I mean, we're a family. So here I am at SVA, I've been here, this is my sixth year as the chair, but as you heard today, everyone here is a professional. Everyone else has another job in a sense. So anyway, this is my firm. I have a firm of 25 people on Long Island in Locust Valley. I have a partner, happens to be my husband and my brother-in-law. We're second generation architects in the firm and we do 70% interior design and we do 30% architecture. So we're all professionals at SVA and that's different. If you go to another school, they're gonna hire, rather than, I have 28 experts because we're all part-time. I even teach in the program, and I get a separate paycheck for teaching, although I'm the chair of the program as a, as a full-time administrator. Um, I've taught in a lot of other schools. I've taught at Harvard and MIT and Georgia Tech and all over the place. There you get hired as a full-time professor so you have four because they can't spread the money out among 28 people. And so that those four teachers are teaching four courses each and it might not be their area of expertise. This system is amazing to me because you get up to date aspects of your career right in the classroom. It's not someone who's not practicing. And I know from going to architecture school, which I did, that a lot of my teachers never practiced. It never occurred to me until later, like I'm learning from people who never practiced in the field. I, I think that's a little crazy. And you're gonna say, why does she have that one up there? Well, I wanna tell you I'm a parent. And my, I have two 29-year-olds and a 30-year-old. And I've been through this college experience. I've looked at every college on the planet with three kids. And so I can tell you about other colleges because they all went in the art direction. They're all artists. And, um, and just to tell you, I'm standing in front of a house my mother-in-law designed at 28 years old. She was an architect, very proud of it. It was sold, we bought it back, our kids grew up here. And if you go to the next slide, one of my children designed these shoes and everyone seems to know about them. They're in my office if you want to try them on and you're a size six. Uh, but anyway, I want to tell you, all three of my kids are artists and I can tell you more, but I'm just gonna just put that one up. But we're all artists here. And you can make a good living. My three kids make more than I do. And, um, but what I really, I don't know, pride myself on is that this career choice, which is really, it's really interior, interior architecture, but we're not allowed to call it that in New York State. So you may be looking at schools in other states, they call themselves interior architecture. We're not allowed to do it in this state. 
so we have to call ourselves interior design. I changed it to interior design colon built environments because we really do build environments. That's what we're learning. But what's cool about it is it is the necessary art. We live in it and you do good things for people. So it's, I think that that's why we're in an art school. You get all the benefits of being in a world-class art school, but you're doing the necessary art and I'm really proud of that. So next slide, please. So when I was your age, I was in an all girls school in St. Louis and I'm filling out this career survey. Next slide. And it told me I should be a florist. Next slide. A, an accountant. And then I turned it over and there was a male side. Let's hope it's not gender based anymore. It told me I should be an architect. And I ran home. I said, what does an architect do? I have no idea. And I found out there was one school in Missouri that had architecture. It was Washington U. And I applied by myself. I ended up going there, still not really knowing what I was doing, but ended up loving it. So if we go to the next one. So what is interior design or interior architecture? So bear with me, I just want to explain that a little bit because I didn't know what it was. So you have an idea, right? And it then gets manifest in something real, something three-dimensional, a space. And um, this is my office again, we'll go back to that one. Uh, this is the restaurant at MoMA, that's my design, okay? And then I have a whole book of 53 restaurants that I've done. This is MoMA on the front, and I'll, I'll go through a couple of those, and you can look at that if you want. But you go from just a napkin sketch, a little idea, we call them a party idea, and it goes all the way to being built and people living in it. Okay, um, this is my messy office. Um, we can go on from that on Long Island. But we've done libraries. That's the inside of a library. That's Bethpage Public Library. We've done 30 libraries. Here we are in Warwick, New York. You recognize that? So this was the first church my husband and I did. We do, we've done numerous religious buildings. And next slide. So first project, and we ended up on the cover. Michael Crosby's very famous. It's very shocking, very humble to, to be given the front cover of this. But um, then here back at MoMA again, next one is the Whitney. I work with Renzo Piano. I designed the um, bookstore and the restaurant there and the cafe that's on the back side of the building. And La Den, which is one of the top restaurants in the world. Right now it's number 44. But everything you see here I did right down to the chairs. And this is what I, I do in my life. I go to, I pick out onyx and then I have to, I create some bar, so I created a curvy bar here and I needed to match um, these pieces so they looked continuous and there's the bar itself. Um, next slide. And this was the greenest restaurant in New York City. And I worked on the tallest um, residential tower in the Western Hemisphere. It's been, there's, they're now taller towers, but I worked and I've been to the top and it's pretty weird. Um, but this is what you get to do. Like I designed all these lights and everything you see again, the, the rug I designed and the walls had concrete on them. They, they were bare and all this, this was made in Prague. I got to fly to Prague, see it put up. I changed a few things. I put it in a box and they sent it over here and put it up. I got to work with some major artists. We're very art forward in our firm. This is Juami Plensa, world-class artist, but I had to make sure that structurally I held that up and then I had the right light on it, but everything else here I designed and that's at the Grand Hyatt at 42nd Street. In Dallas, I did a whole hotel about art and we even ran a photo contest and made furniture, like all the millwork you see here, my design. So there's lights in this that shine up on photos that won the competition and they were different photos in all the rooms and I worked with all these different artists and if a client can't afford it, we do it ourselves. Um, and Damien Hurst, that's kind of gross, I think. But anyway, we worked with Damien Hurst and the guy who does all the dots. Um, and this is at Yale. This is trying to show you that we work on existing buildings. This is a famous building by Marcel Breuer. And we were scared to do it because, goodness, if we messed that up. But we, we, we didn't. We won a number of awards for this. And we made this so the students at Yale could do their own art. And then um, just finished a renovation in Italy that I'm very proud of. It's 
what you call adaptive reuse. You take an old building, and there are so many old buildings that that should be what we do. We do that in the third year, uh, your, your first semester, and then for your thesis, they always have to pick an existing building. Um, so this is something that I just completed in August. It was a hay barn, now a little residence and a sculpture studio. And yes, that's me on the Vespa. <laughs> And this is something that's two blocks away. This is what it looked like before. It was a roofing company. They had taken out a column, and we turned it into this. And now the community is happy because it's got a, an interior shining out to the sidewalk. The whole community looks so much better now. So with interior design, you can affect not only people, but a whole community. And that takes knowing how to do the correct lighting, because if you don't, you don't get that effect. I did an underground, it doesn't look underground here, but from the campus, uh, you can't see the building, only if you're in a boat or in a drone, as we are here. But just finish this out on Long Island, uh, Glen Cove. And here I am at that job. It's actually where I taught for six years before coming here. And so it's a big building we had to build and then put the dirt back on it. So it was kind of a strange sequence. And so I want to make this comparison because now you can tell I do architecture and I do interior design. So as an architect, I went to Wash U for two years, uh, for four, graduate school for two, uh, or there are schools that you could go for a whole, all of five years. Um, my son w had an undergraduate degree in um, industrial design. He just got out of Columbia which took him three years. He got into Harvard, but didn't go because it was three and a half years where my husband actually went. And so this building, if you just say it's a hun uh, uh, $10 million for this building, it was actually 13 million, but let's say it's $10 million. We generally charge 10% of the construction cost. We have to share it with our engineers. There's mechanical, electrical, fire, safety, and so forth. But that's like an average. That building took me three years to do. All right, so when I do a restaurant, and admittedly, they're high-end restaurants, cost $10 million to do this, all right? Four years of school, it's a terminal degree here and many other places, but they, many other places start with a foundation year and you're mixed up with other students doing other things and not focused on interior design. Um, you don't need to go to graduate school, even though 50% of our students do, and your earnings are the same, but guess what? one year. So when I start balancing these, we know in our firm we make more money on interior design and we get to see it right away than we do when we do architecture. So if you're balancing, do I want to go into architecture or not, I'm just, I'm telling you all this to kind of give you the full picture because I did not know this when I was your age. So now where can we study it? Well, of course, here. And we are in Manhattan. We are not in Brooklyn. This is like coolest place. And so here, here's the front of the building. You get to one time in your uh, life here, it's very likely you will be showing in that gallery. And, and the next slide, we are in the heart of all the galleries here. We are in a hot spot, happy face is us, where we are located. And you can get into several of them free with your ID card. So what makes us special? In the heart of New York City, we're the fourth in the country for job placement. And you guys can attest to that. If you need a job, I find you a company, you interview, and we keep going, right? Um, and we have small class sizes, One, very small in some cases. And you won't find that. I could tell you a couple of other schools where well, you'll have one teacher and 30 students, not here. One of the highest accredited interior design programs in the country, we just passed with flying colors. We got over 100%, 116, we think. Uh, we're still waiting for the final report, but our faculty-student ratio is one to two. I have 28 teachers, I have 60 students, so it's amazing. Um, they, and they're winning all sorts of things. We have a, a board out front that was just from this last year, winnings. And then our students, those who go on to graduate school, we've got three at Yale, one at Harvard, one at Columbia, two at Cornell, and on. So they must be doing something right here because they're getting into these really great schools. This is the freshman area. Next. This is the sophomore area just last week. 
And we have this amazing project that it's a, it's a passage, a rite of passage, as they say. Everybody has to do a cardboard chair, and you have to be able to sit on it at the crit. And sometimes it doesn't go so well. But this is what it looks like. And with a, a class of 12 students, you see their names up here, we had seven critics. There's one you can't see right there. Three were furniture designers. They came in here, there, Jorge was there as well. Jorge's our academic advisor and also a teacher. Um, but we were all there for the whole crit to, to impart our knowledge of uh, furniture in the world. But this is an important project because it tests your body, tests your size, tests your weight. So all these things you suddenly learn by having a lot of fun and having cardboard every place. So next slide. So this is a cross section of some of our students. We were at Habitat for Humanity. We try to get out with our hard hats, and I have boots for everybody, to go really see job sites. I never saw a job site, and I went to architecture school for six years, never once. But we try. We did go through the pandemic, so we haven't been in any too recently. But um, this was a pre-college class going to a job that I was doing under this big building, under the city core building. We were doing this very cool floor that we designed, and I wanted them to see this happening. Um, and so if you go, and that's a finished design. They were sitting right here. And just to go back, I mean, I designed everything you see here, not all the furniture. I did the banquettes. There's 16 food venues around this that I did, and I designed the lighting as well. And we didn't want little Christmas, little holiday lights. I wanted big lights because it's such a big space. So that took a little doing. But that's what we do, and it's so much fun. I also, we have a, a Italy program, and we're going to have a Madrid program. But we brought them to my construction site. So that's the hay barn <laughs> before. Uh, and we're a worldly crowd. You heard that today, how many. But um, we have Philadelphia, South America, Seattle, in China. That, that is a group of students, and you, you know that as well. It's pretty, um, it, it's a worldly school. Not every school is like that. Um, we also have a famous set designer, Kevin O'Callaghan, who teaches our set design course, and he gets very involved with the students and is, is truly famous, famous guy. Um, this is a cross section when we were uh, doing, we're under the pandemic. But because we have small class sizes, this was a regular uh, size of a class, we know everybody's name. And again, just to talk about the worldliness, Fouad is from Syria, Philadelphia against Seattle, um, London, and, and uh, New York, and China. So you get to know people from across the globe. Am I in, you probably can't even see. I'm standing in your way. You should, okay, okay. Um, this is our faculty. So next one. There's our student-teacher ratio. It's amazing, okay? And they're all professionals, so you'll get a job. Uh, we have 50% architects and 50% uh, interior designers and artists. So you get to know, because th through this school, you may work for an architecture firm. You work for an architecture firm, right, Annabella? Yeah, well, I'm working for an interior design school. Now, but you did, yeah. and, and that's common. Um, and in my own firm, I have 50% I, architects, 50% interior designers. Okay. Um, and we're accredited. This is a big deal because there will be some schools on your list that are not. And I would not go to them because you might say, oh, I'll get an accredited degree as a master's degree. There are only a few schools across the country that are accredited at the master's level. So all of our students will have that, their, that piece of paper. They will ha their diploma means something. And you can't take, it's hard to take the test without coming from an accredited school. It, it's really important. And again, we pass by way over the top. So, um, And we do work that matters. This really means a lot to me because interior designers have a unique role. We advocate for the human being in the built environment. We're not here to make things pretty. You may think that's what we do. We don't. They may be pretty. But we are trying to make a statement. We're trying to use this as our art, just like the rest of SVA. So it's really important um, that we care about the human being and the environment. That's, that's our duty. And I can tell you, everything the students do is beautiful, no question. But that's not 
the number one reason we do it. So case in point, Fouad, who is from Syria, truly a Syrian refugee, I taught the junior year this hotel course where you learn to build a hotel from scratch. And you're looking at some of these here. They have to build one room. This is not, these are two different projects, but one room and then you have to stack 20 of them. Because when I do a hotel, I do one room so I can figure out where the structure is and the walls. And then I, then I do more than 20 rooms. I do like 200. But you have to figure that out first. And then you do the public spaces. So Fouad said, I said, we're going to pick an organization that will live in your hotel for a month at a time, pick some organization. So he picked a free speech organization because, again, he was from Syria. And so he wanted to make a glass hotel so it would be very honest and people could look into it. And I said, well, you've got to worry about those rooms. And so he did something with the room. It's still glass, but he did all sorts of back painted glass and frosted glass so you couldn't totally invade someone's privacy in the hotel. Next slide. And then COVID hit, and he turned it into a COVID hotel where you could have a picnic on top of your room and wave to your neighbors and not get sick. And then Kayla was a cellist, and she said, well, I want to make a hotel for an orchestra that they could open up all their windows and they could all play to the city. And she made these brass tubes so music could go out to the city. And then, um, which, if you go to the next one, these projects got published in four places. So as you heard today, we're not waiting for you to get out of school to get your work published. We work very hard for you to get your projects out there and get them on your CV now. What I did was I took these projects and I wrote a small article and I shot it out there and then suddenly it was populating all sorts of magazines and, and websites. So next slide. Our students are top winners. So this is Hospitality Design Magazine. They have a student category. We got the first prize on a hotel project and a second prize on a restaurant project. Next slide. We had two students. This, this has been suspended for the last couple of years, but the one year out of the six years I've been here, they ran this uh, uh, Dongia Foundation scholarship, $30,000 for your senior year. And they picked 10 from the entire country. There's 170 accredited interior design schools across the country. Pick, pick 10 students. We got two of those spots. Next slide. We also, Metropolis is an amazing magazine. I've got a copy of it right here. Um, they pick 100 students, 50 are architecture students, 50 are interior design students, 25 of those are undergraduate students. We got three spots. And, and we also got, one of our students got a real nice write-up with his work right there. He's now at Yale. Next slide. And then we have a big Miro board, which is a big whiteboard where we put um, student projects and faculty uh, projects. But this is only from last year for our students. We have one from 2022, 2021, but this is only from last year. These students won in these competitions. They were published here. We had exhibitions, and it goes on and on and on. So that's the kind of um, visibility you will have as an undergraduate student. This was just this summer. This was just last weekend. I went to Philadelphia to pick up two awards and one for myself. Um, they actually got a higher award than I did. Uh, but the students project, and they talked on and on and on about the two students who won those projects. Not about the students, but about the, the, their work. And they said they must be graduate students. I just felt very proud. We're very proud of Brianna. She won the scholarship and was asked to go to Chicago to speak. I would have been terrified. And I listened to it. It was beautiful. And she participated with Designer of the Year, Kia Weatherspoon magazine about her. She's a friend of our, our department um, at a DEI conference. And May she won. This is an international scholarship. And then she won this. And then she won one of these. And, and Tina also just has won so many awards. I'm just, they're, they're really, it's a really strong set of students. I mean, just amazing work. Next, please. So how do we do this? We jump right in. A lot of other schools will have a year of fundamentals. I will tell you, my own children all wanted to get out of New York. They'll never leave New York again. They're fully ensconced now. But they went away, and they had a year and a half of fundamentals. So that left them with two and a half years of what they really wanted to study. 
And so I think our students are strong because you jump right in. So, so retail shops, shoe shops in the first year, you're doing retail, just keep rolling through these offices, and they're up. Oh, and then we have chairs all over the place. That is Fouad with the uh, Eames. So I did not put him in there. He did that himself. Um, but I wanted to show you that because in the first year, students study furniture, all the iconic pieces, and you're looking at them all right here. And they get to then test them out, and then they design from those, uh, that furniture, that penthouse that you just saw before. And you can see some of this iconic furniture right here. Arnie Jakobsen, who did that wood chair that I'm afraid to sit on, was my, was my father-in-law's, um, did this egg chair. And so if we keep going. I put this in here because this is something I always show right away in my studio to tell students, we're not worried if you think differently like this. We want you to think differently like this. This is two artists who I really admire are, are really talking about human behavior and they're trying to share a wall. One lives on one side of the wall, one lives on the other side of the wall, and they're sharing the desk and the eating table and the bathroom and everything. And I just, I just love this as inspiration for thinking outside the box. So second year, we do environmental things. We don't do everything inside. Times Square is in an interior, even though you might think it's a bunch of buildings. We don't think of it that way. Outside can also be an interior. And then this is Morgan, and I put this in here because they, as second year students do all these studies, you can see them all over here, before she ended up designing her chair. And then here you see some chairs where students are testing their weight, their size, and uh, lounging, and here's Fouad again, watch. So that actually moved. And then second year is also in the second semester, and you can all speak to this, uh, because the second semester we do something I think special. We've decided that we shouldn't be doing projects for peop only people who can afford them. We should be doing projects for people who n never saw the hand of an interior designer. And so we were asked to work on the jail system by the city. We took that on but came up with other ideas to help so people maybe didn't even get to jail. We were working on the court system so that it would be a kindler, gentler room to go in so you didn't feel like you were guilty right when you walked in. And those students are published. We did a publication with their work in it. So they did massive research, second year level, massive research and their designs. I mean, that's not really something you do as an undergraduate. And we have two of these. So those students, second year, were published. There you go. And had a huge gallery show in one of our galleries, really enormous, uh, to great fanfare. And so third year, we go into hospitality design. And that's an area that, except for the church and some libraries, we're very much into hospitality design, which is why um, I did this book. But uh, we're able to bring students to these places and see what I call, excuse me, the underwear of a job. When you go in to get a hamburger, you have no idea the whole year that preceded it and all the things you had to do to make sure that experience of eating a hamburger is good. Um, so we do adaptive reuse also in the, that junior year, but we do a little cafe at first, and I have worked for Gordon Ramsay. He's not as mean as everyone seems to think he is. Um, but this student took his beef wellington and turned it into a crusty little cafe with a rare table in the middle. And then that same student, um, I gave them a firehouse. They had to go measure. The firemen were so nice. I said, you had to keep the fire pole, but everything else you're going to change. Adaptive reuse. Take a building that was not a restaurant, turn it into a restaurant. And so this was another Gordon Ramsay, very fiery red, again, sort of a pulling together the firehouse and Gordon Ramsay's food. And then we had a senior work on a restaurant in a spa. And, and then we go to the kind of the hotel. I call it eating semester, sleeping semester. Now we have beds. You're there 24 hours. Um, Christina, who's now at Cornell, followed Miyake and loved how he folded things. And she had this totally foldable room. 
And then she made MakerBot uh, models, very delicate model with this. And then um, this student took Kusama, made it like a bubble room, very fun project. And then uh, Jason, who's now at Yale right now, loved Yo-Yo Ma. And so he wanted a room where the music would come out of two pieces of cello wood. And then he did this facade. He's one of the students who won the $30,000. So the facade, I mean, that's architecture. And we should learn about architecture if we're studying interior design or interior architecture. You have to know what's on the other side of the wall. And you have to be seated at the table when a project starts with the architect and engineers. So we feel like you need to learn this. And you do learn that in this semester, the second half of the junior year. And so that was like a frozen uh, box sweep, is what he was doing. Um, Lexi from Philadelphia, she loved Deborah Harry. So she made a room that was red, like Deborah Harry's lipstick. She made a bed that was the stage where you could sing. This was red leather. And then we did a show where you, we blew up her room and several other students' rooms so you could actually feel like you were in the room. It, it's all about scale and our size uh, uh, next to space. We design textiles. We do rugs in the third year and floors. Here are some of those. We've got some beautiful rugs right over there by students. And we are, um, uh, this is a junior project that is, uh, got selected. We have 12 junior projects, these hotel projects. Like these are single hotel rooms. That's, this is actually a senior thesis, but same concept where you then build up 20 rooms. But, 12 of these projects are at the Venice Biennale right now. They've been there all summer. They were there since April to um, the end of November. I'm actually gonna go pick them up and bring them here, but uh, they, I sent in 12 pictures. We're, we have a big book, this is the tiny book, but Tina is published in the Venice Biennale book along with famous architects. Every other year they have an architecture show. So I'm going forth every other year we're going to the Venice Biennale as many students, students as I can get to go there. And then we celebrate the seniors. We have a big party for them and uh, a big presentation. We get uh, a good portion of them in Dezeen magazine. They'll only take, it's not, not uh, the website. This is hard to get into. I can't get into it. My, my children can, but I can't. Um, but they, uh, that's a big deal to be in Dezeen, like a huge deal. And then here's some senior thesis projects, old building below, skate part above, a spa. This was an existing building with no water in it, and suddenly it's got lots of water in it. Another project um, where, notice, it's all done with doors and windows that existed. So she was doing an adaptive reuse project and using older existing uh, pieces of architecture. She's at Cornell. And then this is a project where uh, Gavin used old uh, oil tanks and created a sustainable uh, fabric and fashion company within it. And he's won lots of awards on this. This is Jason who picked a power house and put a hotel around the inside edge of it. So what's happening in the, the, in the power part of the building, you could peek in and see what's going on while you were enjoying a hotel experience as you were walking around the outside and getting educated about energy. We have exciting electives. We have interior photography. Malcolm teaches that course. Um, we have set design. Our famous set designer, Kevin O'Callaghan, teaches that course. Advanced digital vis visualization is an elective and furniture design. And we have a huge lab, which you'll see here, across the street. We're the only undergraduate department that can use this. So this is really very special. Um, and then we have, again, we have a, uh, all of our chairs, but behind the chairs is a low-tech lab. And we have, that's where uh, these models are made with MakerBots. And here I am in Venice with all these models that are hung up there. We have a lighting lab, and you could turn your fabric or yourself any color you want because lighting will change the color of fabric. Here you see fabric here. If I put it in the lighting lab, this would all change colors. Um, and you have to know about lighting. It's part of the paint of your art. And so we have a great lighting course here. Like my, my son just graduated from architecture school at Columbia a year and a half ago. No lighting course. Like what, like what do we pay for? Um, but we have a really good one. And of course I'm fooling around with it. But you could see at this restaurant I did, 
Life's coming up below. It's actually hiding radiators and a pizza parlor on the other side of the street, like a scrim and theater. Light's coming up here. It's very, very important to know how to deal with light. And we got money for a sound lab. It's going to be in here. We're working on it. The students designed it. And we're just waiting to correct some of the mechanical equipment. And the, the freshmen are right now designing the curtain. That's, uh, you did it last year, right? They're doing it. We're doing another set of freshmen designing the curtain. So we want it to be fun sound. Not, uh, and then this summer, I got $24,000 to do a textile lab. So we're going to be dyeing. I think I don't want students specifying somebody else's designs. You should be able to design the furniture, design the lighting, design the fabric, design the carpet. You can do that. And we're trying to teach everybody how to do that here because it's part of our world. And so we're going to be doing wall covering and fabric now. That's our new thing. And we're going to launch that in the spring. And then we have a lot of extracurricular activities. This is our famous set designer. And uh, it got a lot of press. We were given the opportunity to put chair designs. Maybe you can move the, the go to the, f just, no, keep going. You could actually hit the film, and you could move it a little bit further along, because it's a little long, down below. Well, just let it go. It's OK. <laughs> um, but we, now you have to go back. Go back one more. There you go. Just leave it alone, and it should be fine. <laughs> anyway, um, you can see the individual chairs like way down here. But we had students do spaghetti chairs and telephone chairs, and they got their hands dirty, and they had so much fun. And when you look at their portfolios, this is the first thing they put in. This was extracurricular. We said, who wants to do this? Come, let's make a chair. You could work with Kevin O'Callaghan. And it was just terrific. We put it in Times Square like at 2 in the morning in a big truck. It was, it was ludicrous, but it was a lot of fun. So I think we'll go on. We also do things like, um, again, extracurricular, or it could be part of the set design course, where you are given an opportunity to, with some theme, this was a theme of do a, doing a mannequin, and you do a dress that's based on a New York City skyscraper or a building. So they started out down Madison Avenue for Fashion Week. 20 blocks. Rock Center got word of them. They wanted them. They were there for a year. Now they're in the, my project under the City Corps building. They've been there for two years. So these students can write down that they've been on Madison Avenue, they've been at Rock Center, and they've been under the City Corps building. Again, these are any age students that could participate in this. And there, that's my project again. And these, these projects are just beautiful, beautiful. And we also do things because we care. We are one of four schools that can do a project for DIFA, which is an organization for AIDS awareness. And four students, um, they will only allow four students from our school. It's an it's a internal competition. And these four students won. Uh, they decided to give us the word homelessness rather than AIDS awareness because they're branching out. And so these students did a tricycle with a homeless shelter on it that could be carted around. They did rugs out of um, cardboard. And they, they really studied the homelessness in order to do this. And this raises money to help the homeless. So this last May, we had four students who took a, um, a more optimistic view of homelessness and said, well, the homeless should really be flying around in a balloon because that's real estate that no one can take away from them. And they should be like nomads going everywhere in a balloon. They did use AI to do some of the work. Uh, and it's OK if they tell us they're using AI. It's just like citing uh, or giving credit to someone you quote. But they, um, it was an amazing project. They got lots of press on this. And that's Kevin O'Callaghan and his assistant. And those are the four students. And we have a lecture series that we have three or four times every semester. And I try to bring in people who um, are world class. And they teach the students about things that they wouldn't learn uh, in their regular classes. So we did one time. We did performance one time. We brought them to the Joyce Theater. I found two architects who dance. 
and they got all the students up on the stage and dancing and then we went to Steinway Hall to listen to a Juilliard um, uh, pianist play. We had an acoustician, someone who tells you where sound is coming from in the audience. And that actually gave me the idea for our sound lab because this is very important. Even as an architect, I don't really, I know how to make a, a room quiet, but I don't know why. And so I want us to, to really know how to do that. And so that's why we got money for a sound lab. And we have these two programs. I'm only showing the, the one. We do this every other year where we go to Venice, Florence, and Luca. Next slide. We do that for about for two, three weeks. And I, because I do spend a lot of time in Italy, I do accompany the trip for part of it. And yes, there I am again on my Vespa. And here we are in Venice, and I'm going there next week to get these projects. But our students' work is in a palazzo on the Grand Canal in Venice. Here it is. These are 12 hotel projects. They're models, which are this very size. And each project had to take on an energy, solar, wind, um, geothermal, because we shouldn't leave that to the engineers. We should be thinking about that. And we should be able to have that dialogue with, when we are, are, are working at a firm, because that's part of our lives nowadays. And that, again, was Tina's project in, in this wonderful book. And then just uh, sum up, we're in the heart of New York City. You're taught by professionals. We're accredited, great student-teacher ratio, um, and on and on and on. But we do consider furniture design and product design to be part of what we do. Not all schools think that way. So um, I do answer emails. You can attest to that. And um, feel free. I've got my card right here. People can. Call, you know, email me anytime, and I don't think there's anything left. Let's see. Oh, I do want you to know that we have, when our students go on from here, they're getting into programs like this, or they're going into disciplines like this. So there's so many things that this education can give you that can branch out, because again, we're a necessary art, and we learn a lot. It's, it's um, I think all of these are options, and so I think that's it with that. So what I'm thinking is I'd like the students to talk, and then if there's time, then we could show our little movie. All right? So can we put you guys up here? Well, Louisa, you can join them. Yeah, yeah, so bring your chairs. We, we, we lost Jesse. Or, um, or maybe you want to just go into the film. Yeah, just jump into the film. It's, it's, it's eight minutes. Okay. And the students made this film themselves because we were being accredited and they wanted to show off our s department to its... Uh... Hi, my name is Morgan Jordan and I'm a sophomore at SVA. I'm going to be giving you a tour of our amazing facilities here. And currently I'm standing outside of the West 21st Street entrance to our building in Chelsea, Manhattan. So the School of Visual Arts is 75 years old and the Interior Design and Built Environments program is 32 years old. Um, behind me is our SBA Flatiron Gallery where we will exhibit every December. And let's go on up to the 11th floor so I can show you around. arrived on the 11th floor and here we can see Malcolm, our Director of Operations, who greets everybody who comes in. Beyond the front office is Dr. Carol Bentel's office, the chair of our department. Um, this is always a welcoming spot for students and we all just call her Carol. Welcome, Morgan, <laughs> and welcome to everyone to SBA Interior Design Building Governance. This big studio is the heart of our school. We all work here together and have our own desks with 24-7 access. Hi, my name is Jay. This is my work area, which I love. Um, we are currently working on the building system um, project, and this is our real um, actual scale model on uh, actual construction. And this is my ceiling and floor slabs. And these are two fire rated separations, which is one hour and two hour, and non rated um, partition. That's it. I'm Jessie Von Dornell. I'm a freshman at SBA. I study interior design and built environments. 
This is our work area. This is my desk right here. We all get our own little desks. We have our own cutting boards. Uh, we have state-of-the-art computers that we get to use anytime. It's really nice to have your own space. We get to spend as much time as we want. It feels like just like a second home to house all your stuff and you get to keep organized. Um, these are the computers in the back over there. We have our kind of room for uh, materials and inspiration. You can go in there anytime that you want and look at new materials that you've never thought of before or they have examples. We have a full library to give us all the information we could possibly want from like code to inspiration. Hi, my name is Vera Toussaint and I'm a junior student here at the School of Visual Arts. On our first day, we we're asked to draw a full-scale closet project in order to develop our relationship with scale and to, in preparation for our hotel project that we're working on for Indian Studio. After we drew this exercise, we moved on to working on a more developed closet project collaboratively. Me and Jesse worked on this closet project and we called it the partition. We wanted to recognize the impact of COVID-19 and how sometimes in a small space you might want separation from someone that you're cohabiting with. So we like the idea of using the closet as a, a space divider. We also wanted to include um, aspects of social distancing, um, so that is our closet. Jesse, also a junior, also, we um, need to design a closet individually. Oh. This is, um, I use glass, uh, it's, which is a really unusual material, and I name it called Twist Closet Axe, which is a highly functional uh, furniture piece that features transformable partition um, to divide rooms into different environments, um, and it's equipped with um, smart technology to optimize the functionality. So this um, closet, Twist Closet as also a, a sustainable design that um, can transform heat absorbed from solar panels and convert it to um, the energy for technology use. So this is my closet design. Hi everyone, I'm Mengchi and I'm currently a junior in the interior design department. So um, you can see this is our team project for the sound lab. So um, our department received a 32,000 grant from Angelo Dongya Foundation to create this project. And um, the junior studied the importance of the sound and then designed this um, space, and you can see that. Then the freshmen, and you can see from this picture, they designed the graphic for the sound lab. And then this will be realized in one of our existing rooms, and this space will become into a multifunctional space. So our big studio is home to many different labs and one of our favorite labs is the chair lab which is located on either side of the space. Um, here we can find famous examples of iconic stools and chairs and this is not a museum so we're encouraged to take them off the shelf whenever we want and use them as our, at our desks for however long we want. Um, and then freshman year we actually get to take a furniture course where we get introduced to these notable furniture pieces and more and this shelf gives us the opportunity to test them out with our bodies. In our sophomore year we design and construct cardboard chairs which test our knowledge of structure, human scale, and design aspects. We also have a furniture design course located in a lab across the street um, so that's open for an elective um, to take as an upper class. So another lab is our low tech lab which allows us to make things without heavy fabrication machinery. Um, here we have an industrial sewing machine and maker bots. So this is our materials lab. Here we have any kind of material one could want for an interiors project, uh, including but not limited to wood, fabric, glass, stone, etc. Um, all of our design projects are required to be accompanied by materials. So now I'll show you our print room. We spend a lot of time in this room. And here I will introduce you to Eugene, who is our systems administrator and overall tech genius. So here we have our plotter, we have some printers, and then our laser cutting machine. This is our computer lab. It has 15 state-of-the-art computers, a projection screen, and an instructor station. Over the course of our four years at SBA, uh, we learn we have four computer classes learning AutoCAD, the Adobe Suite, Revit, Rhino, SketchUp, and more. We also have two large classrooms which we use for the majority of our courses. 
And both of these rooms um, are equipped with whiteboard, pinup board, a projector, and a projecting screen. And the furniture is often changed to fit the task of the class. We also have VR capabilities in these rooms. Okay, hi everyone. This is our lighting lab, and we have all kinds of settings in our keypad. And we have all kinds of books. Yeah, you guys can, can just feel the lights changing in this room. And yeah, we have a lot of scenarios included in that um, keypad. It's pretty cool. And yeah, not many schools have that. When this is our sustainable material library. Uh, we have all kinds of sustainable materials on the market or not on the market. This is, is Biomason and this is a tile can grow itself from the uh, aggregates provided by uh, Biomason company. It has two colors and so what it does is uh, it can be assembled on site or uh, pre-assembled for construction. It's a very sustainable material and it has the lowest carbon footprint. So we also prioritize pinup space around the perimeter of the studio. Um, here I'm at our congratulations pinup board where we display the projects that students have won amazing awards for. Um, and then generally we just have student work everywhere, um, which is a really inspiring environment to be in. Here we have displayed some really beautiful textiles done by our juniors. Um, these are rug designs that were actually manufactured in swatches. And then also the pinup space is often home to job opportunities, internship applications, to make sure everyone in the studio is in the know about these things happening. And that was made all by our students, so we we're very proud of that. I'm sure it doesn't meet other film <laughs> <laughs> requirements. But why don't we put um, Jesse and Annabella here, and then I might let you guys ask them some questions that you think might be relevant for our students. Okay? So, well, you go back to work if you want. Yeah, you're good. So, I'm going to try and. So, Louisa, you could ask them questions that you think would be. If you were if you were a 17 or 18 year old high school student. I mean, I'm not too far off. <laughs> Who wants the mic? Uh, uh, take it. Maybe close together then, just so we could pass it back and forth. Yeah. I know, just not in that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, should I not turn the light on? But then no, it's the projector. Oh. Um. Okay. Should we introduce ourselves? Yes. Um, I'm Jesse Bongiorno. I'm a sophomore here, so I, I was pretty close to being you guys last year. Um, I remember what it was like. And you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Annabella, and I'm a senior now. So I've been here three years. One year was online, so, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, we were here during COVID. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, and Is this on? I'm it's not. So you want to be the person who asks some questions? Oh, I can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's so. For the recording, it's still. It's oh okay, so you can hear it in there. And so Louisa um, might need to use it. Okay. Okay. Wait. So we should bring it closer. Hello. Um. <laughs> so, what do you think makes us stand apart from other schools from a student perspective? rather than all the stuff that we learned from this presentation, like what is the environment like here for students? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll start. So I think Carol mentioned this, just the fact that it's such a small community, you really get to know everyone in your class and like just personally with the teachers, you don't have that in a lot of the larger schools, you know, you kind of have to like make yourself stand out somehow. Here it's like, very personal, you can come up to a teacher, ask them a question, email them, text them, like they make themselves very available for you, which is very helpful if you have any questions or anything. Um, I would say Carol did mention this, but I think um, 
in the environment, one of a, a huge benefit that we have is that all of the teachers do work in the industry and all of the work that you're producing, that's going to be your portfolio when you're going out for jobs and you have all, Carol has her own firm, a lot of our teachers have their own firm or work in really renowned firms. And so they're going to be the ones hiring you, they're going to be the ones telling you what should be in your portfolio, what people are looking for. Um, and that's just a huge benefit where you're looking to make your portfolio, but you're also looking to be, once you're accepted into these jobs, you want to be the person that they're looking for. And you just get such a well-rounded education in that way. Um, I would also say that this, you're so comfortable speaking with Carol. You can go into her office anytime. Um, Malcolm Eugene, like, it's so personal, but also the students. I've been to, this is my third college, and it's the only college that I went back for a second year. Um, and they were all art colleges, so I think like a huge benefit in the student body is that, uh, oh, Morgan's not standing here anymore, but Louisa and Morgan, they're a year ahead of me and coming in as a freshman, you don't know anything and it's super intimidating and it's not competitive. It's not competitive in any way. It's, it's such a beautiful community that we have where like, you can just go up to someone that you've never talked to. Like new, we have new people in my year and they're a little better at uh, like rendering and you can just go up and ask them and they'll take so much time out of their day to actually sit down with you and help you. Jorge has come in on so much of his extra time. He has sat with me four hours on days that he doesn't come to school. Like he will come in specifically just to help teach me rendering and new programs, like programs that they haven't taught us here yet. I've asked him to teach me and he's all, everybody's amazing. Like it's, it's so great. Like. <laughs> So, Annabella, this is a question for Annabella. You are working on your thesis right now. How has the last three-ish years prepared you to work on this huge project? Okay. So, I was really scared for my thesis, um, like starting from freshman year, because they make it out to be like this huge project, and I was like, oh my god, like I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But like, they just really prepare you for it, and I think. A lot of it also comes from like the actual like stuff that you learn in the class. So like mine has to do with like um, kind of providing like a third space for people that don't have access to it. So it's more about like serving the community, which is something that uh, Carol did mention you learn in your second year. So you kind of like start to learn about what interests you and then kind of focus on that more. And then of course we have like other resources. So I felt like. I needed some help with maybe like rendering and modeling, so Jorge's always there, like he's very helpful and just willing to help anyone. And yeah, you can really just talk to any teacher and they'll help you and just talking to your peers also, yeah. So. Now, Jesse, we're doing questions for each of them now. Um, you said that you went to different art schools and you didn't come back for a year. What was so special about this department that made you want to stay here and hopefully continue. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going, I swear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back for the rest of the years. Um, I think one of the things that Carol said was how you jump right in. I think when I started, when I was even applying, how she went through um, that discussion of more in depth of it's not just interior design. I think when I first started here, cause I didn't get to do this. I didn't get to come to like the student's day. Um, so I kind of started on day one and I definitely thought it's so much more, oh, I'm gonna just gonna pick furniture that goes into a space. And then they were like, actually you're creating the space. You're creating everything about the space. And it, it was the more in depth education, the idea that you're um, going to learn how to change existing buildings and you're not just picking the furniture, you're also going to get the education on how to make certain furnitures, on how to make carpets, um, on who to talk to where she was saying um, a lot of our education if we're not architects or engineers, it's a lot about learning the language of those people so that you're respected when you're on the sites with them and the other art uh, schools that I went to or interior design programs that I looked at they weren't, you weren't learning the language for your peers to respect you when you're actually there. And I just wanted to learn everything. I thought that everything of it all was just so enticing. 
And it was true, once I went to school here, your freshman year, um, it's a little more general, obviously, but you are um, immediately learning about spaces, and by the end of the year, two of your projects have already been creating, you create an entire apartment, you get to pick everything about it. Um, you're not just creating the interior, the premise for the project is that you're also creating the exterior, and um, just all of the like prep for these projects, it, you are learning so much about the environment, but also clients and what clients want, and I just, I haven't got such a rounded education before this school, truly. Okay, so what classes in particular stood out to you the most and make you want to decide on what you want to do in the future? Like, for example, like critical thinking helps you with the thesis class and like how are you going to use these classes in the future and how you're going to, you know, expand on your education here afterwards? Start. <laughs> you start? Um, like specific, like spe what specific classes are we like interested in, or? Like what ones have stood out to you the most so far? I mean, you're in your sophomore year, Annabelle is in their thesis year. I'm in my third year. Yeah. Do you want to talk about what you? What I've learned like so far. Um, well, right now, um, I hadn't done any sort of computer programs at all. I've always really been into drawing, but I haven't gotten the education of these computer programs that you get here. Um, I think for me, the most interesting so far is like rendering um, or learning Grasshopper, where it's a little more like technical side of rendering. Um, and I never, honestly, like I never felt super smart before coming to this school. And learning things like that, like the technical work of it. Um, in my first year, we did drafting, which I think um, it's kind of it's kind of old school the way that we learn it. It's so drawing, and it teaches you to be really hands on. Um, and then when we went to the digital aspect of it, I just felt really smart and like cool, and I never felt that way before. And it just made me feel a lot more confident in other aspects of my life um, with like digital and when you learn that, you can transform it into um, my, so we have digital renderings and then you have your physical renderings where you get to take your own art skills and put it in there. Um, and I think the digital aspects of it where there's certain parts that you can, if you build a building, the digital part where you can play with the lighting. So you learn about like shadows and the computer does the work for you. And then when you're transferring that into your own drawings, you, you're you learning from these digital programs and I learned so much more about like light and rendering in my own artwork. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's, <laughs> those classes have kind of been my favorite, like perspective and rendering and all the things that I was interested in before that don't just pertain to like interior design in my art. Yeah. Because sophomore fall semester, you take a intro to digital fabrication class, which is the digital part, and then you also take a hand rendering class as well. So you're taking both digital and hand rendering at the same time, which is very interesting to have the sort of digital and physical aspects at the same time so you can take upon what you've learned in both ways. So yeah, and then Annabella, if you can talk about the class yeah. that you liked. <laughs> so I took Kevin O'Callaghan's set design class and that class was so much fun because it was just like stepping out of a little bit of interior design and kind of like the more hands-on creative side of it, which was so much fun. Like we made a ukulele in his <laughs> class and <laughs> Um, you know, we just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we just like do very like creative things, but all still sort of connecting with interior design. Um, and then also the lighting design class, I think was very helpful um, since it is like the more technical aspect of it. And I think now like working in the company that I'm working in, like we've worked with lighting designers and like having meetings with them and actually knowing like the terminology is really helpful. Like I can say like, oh, Cove light, you know, <laughs> and then they're like, wow, oh, you like actually know that because lighting design is like a whole other part of interior design, but it's important for us to know too. So. Great. Well, maybe we should open it up to see if they have questions. Yeah. Yes. Questions from anybody. Do not be shy. We don't buy that often. Um, 
From parents too, if you have yeah. any questions. Well, we have a tour of the space. We can get you out of this room. And mm -hmm. I'd ask if you both could leave the tour. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have food. Oh. May all be hungry. <laughs> okay. So, and we're around the whole time. So no, you guys were terrific. <laughs>